Another great day to watch softball here in Boise. Fans packing the berm out there beyond the outfield wall as we bring you all the action on the Mountain West Network. Appreciate you spending your time with us here on this Friday evening. Leonard Berry, Sidney Bruner here inside the press box at Donald Larson Park, the host of the 2024 Mountain West Softball Championships. Less than a month away now, and both of these teams trying to stake their claim. Good start for Fresno State with Elias up, who leads her team in batting average with the 392 and with 51 hits, which besides Sophia Knight, who's leading the nation, that's more hits than anyone on Fresno State or Boise State's team. Yeah, Natalie Elias, sophomore from Purcellville, Virginia, who came over to Fresno after playing at Cal Baptist University. It's been her freshman season there. Made 19 starts for the Lancers. Chops this one away in the left for a base hit. And you're talking about someone who loves to swing the bat with only three walks and 51 hits. She does her job. And fired up about it over there at first base. And it sets up the big hitters in this Bulldog lineup. Starting with Sophia Median. Oh for one today. Cottle struck her out looking on three pitches. Turns this one around, but well foul. Batting 380, and one of the Bulldogs that you would expect might hit a home run. Only 16 this season for Fresno State, but Medians got six of them. Up and away the rise ball from Cottle. Almost like a pitch out there to make sure Elias wasn't doing anything on the base pass. He's six for eight on stolen base attempts this season. She gets into her sprinter stance at first. doesn't seem too excited, although Fresno State wants to move the runners around. They need as many runners as they can on base right now to try and scratch a run. A hit from Elias, just the second of the game for the Bulldogs. Median goes down, hits it off the net for a foul ball. It's two and two. Bulldogs have had 16 games when they've had 10 or more hits. So they're a team that puts a lot of hits up when Cottle's been able to really control them at the plate. 2-2 two -two will catch her in the thigh and Median's gonna take her base down to first. So the Bulldogs with two aboard. You can see the grimace on the face of Sophia Median. That one had to sting. Yeah, you can see here she sees it coming. She tries to turn her leg a little bit so she doesn't have to take it in the front, but something that never feels great. And now Fresno State has a runner in scoring position. And it's for their best hitter, Keahi Matson. Senior from Alta Loma, California. It's just the fourth hit batter of the season for Cottle as well. And that's in who lined out to Groves at first base. Tries to put one down, but nothing doing, and it's a strike swinging. It's a hard situational hitting bunt to miss there. Now she has two strikes and really has to battle off Cottle. O2 fought away. Matson not one who strikes out really at all. Only 13 this season compared to taking 16 base on walls.
Fights another one off the net. Keeps herself in that left-handed batter's box. And we see it here, she's leaving nothing up to chance. The 2021 Mountain West Player of the Year is a freshman. They take off the plate. Great spot by Cottle. She's just been impressive today. Really getting ahead in these counts to where she's able to throw the ball out wherever she wants to try and make these batters chase. On the ground is second base. Bumcrot to Groves, and the Broncos will get one. And not bad by Matson, able to move her runners and now has two in scoring position and only one down. And yeah, when you miss the 0-1 bunt, and you can still manage to move the runners over on the ground out to the right side. That'll play well with your head coach. Speaking of head coaches, here comes Justin Schultz, along with Ali Wall Jasper, the pair of them, actually gonna come talk to Taylor Cottle. And Justin Schultz will head out and talk to his entire defense. His outfielders and his infielders have all gathered together while Fresno State gets their conference in in front of their dugout. Just making sure everybody's on the same page as this is a huge point for Fresno State to try and scratch a run here. And Boise State is going to work to get a stop. Again, like we said, two teams that are very close in the conference rankings, just trying to battle it out in conference. And this series is so important for both teams. Huge series, huge moment in the game here in night number one of the three game set. Cottle trying to Keep the runners where they are as Lauren Almeida fouls the ball off. So that is a first pitch strike for Cottle. Fresno State 0 for 6 in this game when Cottle throws a first pitch strike. They're being so aggressive with that first pitch. Not really letting a whole lot go by. Seeing a lot of swings from Fresno State. O2. Rise ball fouled straight back. Barely got a piece of that one. Had a really good rise, great pitch by Cottle. And Fresno State has been doing a pretty good job of laying off of that, or at least making some sort of contact when it comes through. Swung on, grounded foul, as Farmer will still throw it home, just to make sure she takes all the necessary precautions, although Elias would have been surely safe. Line drive, right center field, Knight charging, diving, and she makes the grab as Elias tags from third. One run will score, but Knight keeps two off the board with that outstanding play. An absolutely incredible play by Knight. Someone who can just do it all at the plate and in the field. You saw her running for it as the ball comes off the bat. She had a ways to go. She was sure of her dive, didn't hesitate for a second, and was able to make an incredible play. 
There you see Elias wisely tagging up from third base. Into center field, Knight's gonna have a chance to make another play. The throw home is a dime! And McAnally puts the tag on Median. The Broncos are out of the inning and they still have a one run lead. Sophia Knight getting it done with the defense for Boise State. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's the top of the fifth inning. Boise State leads 8-0, and Taylor Cottle inside the circle. She's had the strikeout working today, and over the course of her entire career, she has struck out more than anyone in Boise State history, up to 489 now, if you add on the five more today. Yeah, trying to become the obviously the first pitcher in Bronco history to reach the 500 mark, so you would expect to see that probably by the end of next week, depending on the rest of this outing. Part of the problem for Taylor is she's been in some five-inning games where you lose six opportunities to add to your strikeout total. There's a chance that she's in a five-inning game today. Janissa Martin, Sophia Morales, and Kelsey Kelso need to score some runs for UNLV, but a first pitch pop out to Baumkrat is not going to help that. Well, again, getting that leadoff hitter, Cottle has retired the first two hitters in each of the first four frames. The only base runner was Morales' two-out single back in the second. So Cottle looking to make it 15 of 16 if she can close it out with a 1-2-3 inning. Right down the pipe there from Cottle. And she starts the battle with Morales. The only player who has a hit off Cottle today. Cottle had just 58 pitches entering the inning, so that was just her 60th, that first pitch to Morales. Straight back, nothing at two. Cottle, who came into this game, 12 and seven record and a 2.72 ERA. He has been every bit her best here inside the circle in game one of this doubleheader. Seeking her 11th complete game in this her 18th start of the year. Poked to left, that'll fall right over the glove of Farmer. They were playing Morales to slap, and she did, and exceeded all expectations of the Boise State infield. So Morales, the only hitter that's been able to solve Cottle today, a couple of hits for her. Morales is two for two in stolen bases, and I bring it up because even though it's an eight-run game, if you can work her around to score, you can extend the game. But McAnally has been one of the best defensive catchers in throwing out base runners behind the plate. So the game within the game here, if you will. All that while Kelsey Kelso is in the box. There's really one team in the Mountain West that runs. No, Nobody in the conference has more than 43 stolen base attempts except for Nevada, and they are unreal at stealing bases. They've stolen 98 on 111 tries. Again, they have just been the story of the season. Their offensive production, the stolen bases, the pitching, all of it has come together. That's why they lead the conference, and both of these teams are trying to catch them. Boise State just two outs away from getting a big win over a team that's ahead of them in the standings. Yeah, this, the Broncos close this one out. It would even them up in the loss column with the Rebels. Of course, you don't get in the tournament at the end of the year with losses. It's victories. So the bigger number for me is the fact that UNLV still has six wins in the bank, while Boise State is seeking just its fourth. And a warning looks like it's been issued to the dugout. Don't know if that was the head guy, Justin Schultz, or maybe Allie Wall, Jasper, the pitching coach. Does not matter. It counts. Counts it. 
counts against the head coach. So a second warning, regardless of who it would be issued to on that staff, would result in an ejection of the head coach. We saw that a year ago in one of the games. Cottle delivers on 3-1 and walks Kelso. And that makes that single for Morales even bigger because she's in scoring position. Well, the first walk given up. So we were talking about how Cottle had set down 13 of the first 14 she faced today. But now a base hit and a walk gives the Rebels their first runner at second base out in scoring position. Skyler Shaw swinging away on the first pitch. Two runners on for UNLV. One of them has to come around and touch home for this game to continue. I, she, I thought she went around. Wow. Appeal to third, no swing. Says so Shane Jackson. Here's a look. Boy, that's a case where the home plate umpire doesn't ask for it right away, and sometimes when that happens, the base umpire will stick with the call at the plate of no swing. There's another one that looked rather close, but Shaw keeps the bat on the shoulder, two and one. And here comes Wall Jasper, <laughs> and she's screaming at the home plate umpire asking for time. Based on that reaction, I'm going to say Allie's the one who got the warning. <laughs> Just trying to settle Taylor down right here. Again, the game obviously in still in control for Boise State with the eight-run lead, but you're trying to close it out as if it's a one-run game here in the fifth because you don't want to have to play six more outs defensively or even three. And so right now the conference in the circle between the battery mates, Cottle and Mack and Allie with the pitching coach, Wall Jasper. I think she may be reminding Taylor here, you're, you're still one pitch away. You get a ground ball here, you could turn two and, and be out of here. Obviously, Shaw from the left side a little bit more difficult to double up. Cottle, who averaged 14 and a half pitches in each of the first four frames, is about to throw her 14th pitch of the fifth inning, and she's... Only got the one out so far. 2-1. High. Another rise ball that drifts out of the zone. Make it 3-1. and one. Chance for UNLV to get back-to-back -back walks and load the bases. This could end up being the most important pitch of the day. It is right over the heart of the plate for a called strike. Good job by the Boise State defense. They had the wheel play on there defensively. They did not get caught napping because Shaw, I think, was trying to just pull that bat back and maybe pull off a, a steal of third base. But Farmer did a nice job to rotate over, and Morales had to stay put. 3-2. On the ground, foul past Groves at third. That was that ground ball we were talking about. If that stays fair... Groves probably in a position to step on the bag and go across the diamond for the double play. Another payoff pitch from Taylor Cottle. Shaw swinging and missing the sixth strikeout of the game. Number 490 in her career. Great job by Cottle to battle back from a 3-1 count. Shaw swing underneath it. You can see that on the replay. So one strikeout, at least one strikeout in every inning. And now you get the number nine hitter, but I think it's going to be a pinch hitter for the Rebels. It is indeed a pinch hitter, Riley Trujillo. Is pinch hitting. Trujillo was warming up back in the first inning, or, or second inning, I should say. It's potentially the third pitcher we were going to see today for the Rebels, and instead she makes an appearance in the batter's box here in the fifth, and she's the last hope for the Rebels if they want to extend this game. 
First pitch right at the knees, a called strike for Cottle. Trujillo, freshman from Rialto, California. Fouls it straight back. UNLV down to their final strike. They spent a night in Rialto, California back in the early 90s. Start of a cross-country baseball trip. Actually, cross-continent because we wound up in Toronto. So that was two countries. Started in Rialto. They went to an Angels game and then stayed with a friend in Rialto, California. On your way across North America, the 0-2. That's way up there. That begs the question, did you see every ballpark or? Not on that trip, no, no. I think it was six or seven, maybe. One, two. Outside corner, called strike three, and the ball game is over. Taylor Cottle, a gem, five innings, two hits, in a shutout performance with seven strikeouts. And the Broncos take game one off the Rebels. Yeah, just a great pitching performance by Caudill. Obviously, the offense got going in the first inning. Again, we talked about it, scoring the first and or the second. Boise State now 20 and one. So really the game plan working to perfection in game one, and now the Broncos have a chance to sweep and move ahead of the Rebels in the standings in game two. So it's a run rule victory for Boise State in five innings over UNLV, but it's only game one of our doubleheader. We've got more softball action coming your way next. The next game will start in just about 30 minutes, so around 1.15 Mountain Time is when we expect to get that game going. We'll be back here on the Mountain West Network as the Broncos win it 8-0 over the Rebels. For our broadcast crew here at Boise State and my broadcast partner, Cl Craig Lawson, I'm Leonard Berry saying so long from now. We'll see you in half an hour.